So you want to get started playing with classic cars, but you don't know where to start as far as what tools you need. Tell you what, let's talk about it. This will be fun. So welcome back to the Snow Family Racing Garage. And by no means is this the comprehensive list of everything you're ever going to need. No, this is just a place to get you started. Because let's face it, some of these classics are pretty simple cars when you get right down to it. And you can do the whole thing, every job on it, with pretty simple tools. There's a couple of specialty tools along the way, but you'll probably pick those up as you need them. Let's talk about tools. About 20 years ago, for my birthday or Christmas, when I was like 13, 14 years old, my dad got me a Craftsman socket set. You know, quarter inch, three eighths, some half inch stuff, metric and SAE. And I tell you what, I still use these things today. Now, obviously, I've added a few things to it, and this is only a small part of what I've added. But, you know, it doesn't take a ton to get started. You can get started with some pretty simple stuff. The other thing that I started out with was a basic set of Craftsman open-end metric and SAE wrenches. Now, obviously, no ratchets. These are pretty basic, and there's a lot of options to step up into the ratchet box-end style. Now, something else that's nice to have is a breaker bar and some bigger sockets. These are great when you're doing big suspension parts, when you're taking wheels and tires off. You know, you need a little bit extra leverage. And guys, they don't have to be fancy or expensive. This is a Pittsburgh from Harbor Freight, and I use the crap out of it, and it's been solid. Other things you're going to want to get, a set of screwdrivers. This is just a flat blade and Phillips from my collection because if I started showed you everything I started out with it'd be a fistful of screwdrivers but you know just a good screwdriver set will get you a long ways down the road now on the screwdriver front the ones that have you know they come apart and they've got you know flat blade and Phillips interchangeable bits those are sure nice to have when you don't know what you're going to encounter you can always flip it around and get what you need now something else you're going to want to, that I'm seeing a lot more is Torx this is also one of those interchangeable bit ones. I tell you what, it sure is nice to have. You just go out there, you grab it, and you got what you need. Now, there are some more specialty things out there, like the torques that have the little dimple in the middle of it, but you'll probably pick these up as you need them, and apparently uh, I'm missing one. I'll have to go find that guy, or it's lost. One of the two. Things happen. The Universal Nut Rounder Offers, also known as Vice Grips. These have gotten me out of as many problems as they've gotten me into. You know, a good set of pliers, needle nose, the channel locks, vice grips, they're sure handy when you need them. You know, the, once again, a basic set, and there's a lot of options, whether you want to go to Home Depot. You know, it's coming as I'm filming this, it's coming up on Christmas time. There's a lot of sets out there that you can get into for very reasonable money. And if you're just looking to throw a set in the back of the truck to have when you need them, they're a good set too. So let's keep talking about tools. Jacks and jack stands. Very important if you're going to be working under a car. Now that yellow one right there, that's like the one that I started out with. And I've moved up to the much bigger jack because I've got a, you know, a Yukon XL Suburban. It takes a little bit more beef to lift. And now jack stands, make sure you pay attention and don't get the ones that have been recalled because those are just bad. So pay attention to the tools you are getting. There are good options out there without spending a ton of money. Now, you can pick up jack and jack stand kits. I've seen them at local auto parts stores for, you know, less than $100. You know, the big Daytona four-ton jack, I think I spent $250 on. But, you know, something, it's a good jack. Also, you're going to want a place to keep your stuff. That's just a basic home act. I found it on clearance at a... You know, I don't remember where, but it's a good little toolbox that has enough volume. You can put everything you want in it. Now, with toolboxes, excluding that little guy, it's very easy to get, you know, lost and, oh, I need the biggest toolbox I can possibly get. Those are nice, but they're expensive and you don't have to have the biggest toolbox in the whole wide world. Remember, it's the tools that are in your hand that do the work, not the thing you put your tools in. Another thing you're going to want to think about is with classic cars or even project cars in general, there's probably going to be electrical issues. At what point a good multimeter is going to get you a long way down the road. This is an older Craftsman that it's a very nice unit from the time we bought it. There's really expensive multimeters out there. There's also much lesser expensive ones. I think this one came from Walmart on a trip when I had forgotten my meter, thought I might need it, so I ran in and picked one up. But you know something? I've used similar models. They work just fine. They'll get you a long way down the road when all you're doing is basic electrical troubleshooting. Just keep in mind, guys, you don't have to spend a small fortune on tools to be able to get something that's useful.
something else to add to your collection when you're just starting out the repair manuals i know books paper but i tell you what these are sure nice when you can take them out put them on the car you've got wiring diagrams torque specifications you've got troubleshooting information you've got everything you need mostly at your fingertips so guys keep in mind a little light reading on cars will get you a long way down the road another thing you're going to want to keep in mind lights flashlights when you're working under the dashboard working under the car you need to be able to see what you're doing otherwise it's going to be a mess i mean if you can't see that blind hole that you're looking for way up the top of the frame you're really gonna it takes the fun out of it so guys remember it doesn't have to be expensive i think i picked this up on clearance for like 15 bucks at a hardware store it's a good light it's got a usb port so you can recharge it it's easy to use and it's bright you know good stuff doesn't have to be expensive and also a little flashlight you keep in your pocket is always nice because you never know when you're just looking for casting numbers on the back of a block in the car and you need a little bit of light to just find the numbers you're looking for as you go along you'll pick up tools you want tools you need things that make your life a little bit easier i love my electric ratchet it's one of those tools that you know in hindsight i wish i had picked up years sooner but that's a story for another day you can do a lot with these cars with basic hand tools it doesn't have to be fancy the idea is to get out there and enjoy your project cars thanks for watching we'll catch you later